absolutely right so cdn is a backbone for any applications if you use any kind of applications right these days every company every organization use cdn but cdn becomes very very important in terms of live streaming like hotstar netflix uh, uh, i mean all the g5 and all these whatever application you use for content delivery right um, you will come to know more about the usability uh, uh, and the fitment of the cdn in our uh, use cases when we talk about maybe uh, youtube design or hotstar design and uh, where and why cdn is so 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 important like you know whenever a um, uh, design like youtube or any kind of question comes the first question people are interested in cdn okay so it's that important but it's not limited to only the hotstar or youtube it also helps you in doing a lot of things so let's talk about that right so the content delivery network cdn uh, the companies like akamai cloudfair uh, i think the cloudfair uh, hosts 70 to 80% of content globally and last year or i think last to last year there was some configuration changes by aws uh, or somebody uh, what has happened is because of those configuration change uh, uh, the cloud fair became unavailable for 80 to 90% uh, of the services and just imagine that uh, the number of websites uh, and the companies uh, which were using the cloud fair was so high that 40% of the network traffic across the universe went down okay so that was the impact it created on the internet and that is the kind of uh, the volume uh, the uh, cdn uh, provides okay um, now you must be wondering like what exactly this i mean why it is so important what what it do, what does it do why why they depend on something like a cloud flare or akamai uh, kind of a solutions who are you know very very like in you know, a prominent uh, you know companies uh, in terms of providing the cdn solutions so what happens is you know uh, your your system uh, does a lot of things right like when you uh, open a browser you see a lot of uh, things on if you if you recall your um, you know memory like you know you see when you load a particular website uh, you see a lot of things something flashing here some video or gif uh, some pictures some small videos some hyperlinks uh, something right little flashing moving here there and a lot of contents and not only that um the the aesthetics of the website had changed drastically from some, um, imagine uh, some website in 2000 and now in 2020 so the the aesthetic beauty or the the responsiveness of the website had changed drastically right in in last two decades uh, you know the way you used to interact the application everything used to be click event right you know click and the refresh so you you do need to register an employee you register click on the register button it will reload the entire page right it will reload everything and then it will render the page again and then it will show you it was not that responsive these days what you do uh, if you have used uh, something like a jira that is the best uh, you know thing to explain you see the jira right in the jira you might be seeing that okay there is a signy button here you click on the signy you just do a tick mark and this area gets updated you put a comment this area is updated that page never gets uploaded and that is what we call soa have you heard about this or i'm uh, sorry sorry not as spa i'm sorry single page application right so spa so what happens is your your the website remains you know your page remains as it is it hardly gets reloaded and you are able to perform so many things why how because there are tons and tons of javascript codes are embedded into it okay it has been made so reactive and um, um, you might have heard about the react js you angular js right um, there are a lot of other things are called i think view js what these guys are doing these guys are making the dom uh, there is a dom concept in the ui if you are aware so it makes the uh, dom as dynamic as possible the rendering uh, the uh, the responsiveness without doing reload and they put lot of logic at the client side itself so the idea behind these things is you make client little heavier so that your server will be in you know a little lighter uh, side so what it means try to do more computation on the client side you want to do some little uh, you know little heavy application which can be done on the ui let's do it because think about this one right um uh, you you have a um, server okay just a small example there is a file upload okay you 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 do a 1 gb of file upload okay now uh, you know if you are to try and do a file 1 gb file upload and it needs to put into the some uh, s3 bucket or something um, this server will get that 1 gb file and suppose s3 says that okay you can only have 100 mb of data chunk 
what you will do you got the 100 gb uh, 1 gb file in the server and then you have a code written inside the machine and you do a split and you make 100 mb of chunk and then you upload to the s3 bucket okay so where are you doing this computation you are doing this split here okay what a, 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 a best design or better design says don't do these computations which can be done on the client side right why for you you have a system you have a laptop right you have launched your applications in your i mean you have website uh, you have opened a chrome browser and uh, you know your system has maybe 8 gb ram you are typically using it now uh, so so and there are 100 users like you right so all 100 users have basically um, uh, opened their browser and they're trying to upload a file of 1 gb each uh, uh, so for a server uh, to split that file it will be 100 user into 1 gb so they need to process 100 gb at the very moment suppose at 10 and 10 and 10, 10, 10 clock right but what if this split would have happened at the client side for this person it is only 1 gb needs to be split it will become 100 mb and then you send in the chunk we will talk more about when we will talk about the implementation for a cloud storage or a file upload system like a dropbox or something we'll cover all this area in detail so this will be uh, so you do the computation at the ui side and you do try to make client a little heavier so that the pressure will not come to you and you will get already in chunk you just pass it on you stop you basically you got saved by doing these kind of operations here right so if you think a smart application what they do they try to do a lot of stuff at the ui itself and that is why these angular js react js have come quite handy in these things they are very responsive very reactive they have the contrization they have the mvc uh, architecture at the ui itself uh, and they have the these uh, kind of patterns if you have used observables and all these patterns through which they uh, do the asynchronous api calls there is something called websocket we will learn about that as well it's very interesting thing uh, so websocket has come a lot of other things are coming and evolving but the bottom line is make client the not the user make the client the the native client the uh, javascript or whatever you're writing as smart as possible and make the dashboard for a dumb people like no as dumb this is the concept people follow right so for a usability perspective you think about how how to explain that to a fool right like how they will um, uh, you know go ahead and uh, do with very minimal uh, uh, brain usage right they can just go ahead and ui should be as simple as that but the internal logic at the ui should be as smart as possible so that you don't put pressure on the server okay so so now coming to the CDN, why why I was uh, you know coming to the CDN, why I was explaining this is I'll tell you. So when you see the UI, uh, you see a lot of stuffs, right? You see the GIF, you see the pictures, you see the videos, uh, and uh, you know a lot of things contents are changing. And not only that, also uh, as I was talking about, uh, it brings a lot of UI libraries. Okay, so uh, there is a uh, many jokes about as well uh, Node underscore modules. I think uh, uh, I think you might have heard about this one that it brings a lot of modules in place when you start downloading and all that, right? So your UI is becoming, becoming much more richer, okay, day by day. And it needs a lot of static content, okay? Uh, static content means the change, the, the content which is not dynamic in nature. It is like as it is, you get it and you basically, you know, uh, use it as that. Well, so mostly it will be like a JavaScript library. It will be like images. It will be like uh, video files. It will be like uh, GIF files and all these things which constitutes or render your UI. What organization do is they said that hey, I want my application to be you know uh, you know run very fast. I don't want these static content to be processed by my server. Okay, so what what it means? Like suppose there is no CDN. Okay, let's think about that. So this is the client. You make uh, uh, you visit some um, some website. Right, Google is very plain vanilla website. Um, Amazon.com. And um, um, again, uh, load balancer will be there, and then your server comes in here. Now, so. You know, when you say that, okay, you know, render this Amazon.com, uh, it has way too many images, um, uh, uh, JavaScript library and all these things. Those things getting transferred through the HTTP call or rather HTTPS call with authentication authorizations served by this particular server, maybe suppose Tomcat or Glassfish, these kind of servers, this will be bombarded because those tons of people are hitting Amazon.com every second. And what they're doing is, they are serving a lot of requests which are not even uh, you know uh, dynamic in nature they are like just as it is the image the javascript files the a um, lot of other files they are just unnecessarily getting rendered by this machine this server um, uh, which 
they could have used it for logical related operations like you know doing the business logic that okay if i use your registers or check out a product or add something put a comment so the server should be doing those business logic they should be uh, you know devoid of using the static content request they should not get a request that hey get me this html file get me this uh, image file they should not be doing that number one number two the storage is also a problem just imagine that you are storing the video files gif files uh, content files here and um, you know uh, bombarding these machines if you don't put on the machine you said that okay i am a smart i am going to use something like a file storage system and there i'll start so that also is a problem right you will basically you know hit the server the server will make a request get the files and send it all these things are problematic right so what they do they do something like this so this is your client this is your lb this is your server this is your database and here only the client only you can have another load balancer or whatever and it will connect to cdn okay so what will happen in this case is when you hit amazon.com right so it will make multiple calls it will make one call to cdn it will make one call to server so server will take that okay who are you like user you know whether you are authenticated yes what are the roles what are the things you can see these kind of logical operations will do it will give you the metadata or the data about the applications like hey welcome uh, so and so xyz uh, check last orders or last order status is this on the same page it shows right so these kind of data needs a logical thinking it needs to be authenticated check the roles get the details it will get into the database and render it and send it so it will send only the data like json or xml or some information c value pair or the string based so it will send the data but that data should be displayed how that will render on the ui now that rendering uh, needs needs the J, uh, um, uh, javascript file um, um, css files uh, images right so those things will be offloaded offloaded to cdn okay now what is cdn so cdn is a application just is an application just like a uh, any other applications and um, there are a lot of company like a facebook uh, you know they use their own cdn so facebook has facebook hyphen cdn or something like that if you if you um, do uh, if you log into facebook.com and just do a network inspect and just see the calls you will see a lot of calls are being made to the uh, a facebook cdn so bigger companies a lot of big companies they use their own cdn network they use their own services they have built their own and they are using it but the uh, mid size companies startup companies they just simply go ahead and they become a tenant for them they become a customer for them and they tell that um i need 100 gb of space um to be served data to be placed and uh, you will get so much request so that two three parameters on which you will be billed or charged that okay there are 100 gb or something like that you will be charged for uh, requests now what it helps you so first thing first it helped you to offload the request so that the server will be more busy in computing the data rather than the uh, um, uh, less logical things that is number one thing so that means it will uh, it will help you to do little cost cutting in terms of that second it will achieve you to uh, re reduce the uh, uh, bandwidth cost for your application because your server is no longer uh, involved in rendering those huge javascript file and images so the latency will be lesser and uh, uh it will uh, it will reduce your uh, website load time to a great extent because your cdn is kept as dumb as possible so what they do they don't put much logic into it until unless there are some restricted resources which you are not supposed to be seeing without logging uh, in those cases only there will be authentication authorization will be placed otherwise most of the files like library files and all these things are kept open so it's a direct call and it will basically go and just get it and dump it there third thing is these are uh, very strategically located which means uh, you know it is like a local to you i mean you know if it is a india so india will have their own cdn and there won't be much network hops to connect to those uh, cdn networks to get the files so they are placed very strategically so that you can uh, get the uh, you know files pretty fast and your website's load time will be uh, you know much much faster than the normal conventional one okay uh, so it improves the bandwidth it improves the website load time also i uh, know it uh, the generally what happens right with the files and the content uh, you know if your server is little busy it might end up not giving that particular uh, js file or images file your website might not be rendered properly so uh, it increases the availability of the content to a great extent because these company are only specifically and specialized in providing the content right so they have designed their network in that way they 
uh, if you if you want to learn more about architecture you can go through an akamai engineering page uh, i'll share the link you can go and check how do they work how internally they function uh, uh, you know how do they solve the traffic so they make it more available redundancy and also they have a lot of security in place if you really want something to be secure those functionality is also there as well okay it will provide you and it will also uh, help you to um, uh, you know uh, prevent you from the uh, prevent it from ddos attack something like you know if you you want to hit it multiple times how it will do so these are you know uh, very much specialized in so akamai is the company i think uh, if you have one